Hello, my name is Joe Bornoff and I'm a PhD student in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at the University of Bath in the UK. I'm working in collaboration with Scandinavian Real Heart in Vasteros, Sweden to research the Real Heart Total Artificial Heart. This project focused on improving the modeling of positive displacement hearts using a fluid structure interaction approach. Heart failure affects an estimated 26 million people worldwide and despite high quality treatments, many patients require a new heart. Uh, cardiac transplants are considered a gold standard in these cases. However, the number of available donors is limited. And for example, in the UK, the heart transplant waiting list has more than doubled in the last decade. And it's a problem that's been only made worse by the COVID-19 pandemic. To reduce this shortfall and bridge the gap to transplant, doctors can turn to mechanical circulatory support devices such as a total artificial heart, which completely replaces the native heart. One such device is the Real Heart Total Artificial Heart, developed by Scandinavian Real Heart. It's a novel device containing an atria and ventricles and produces pulsatile blood flow. It achieves this pulsatile flow by mimicking the mechanics of the native heart. And an atrioventricular plane of the native heart can be seen to translate up and down to squeeze blood out of the heart. The real heart total artificial heart uses this same technique, coupled with a pair of bileaflet mechanical heart valves to govern the forward motion of the blood. Computational fluid dynamics studies have previously been undertaken on the real heart device, however, the motion of the bileaflet valves was prescribed using data obtained from experimental analysis. Now, this rigid workflow meant only a select number of simulations could be undertaken using the data that was available at the time. So the aim of this study, therefore, was to create a new flow driven modeling strategy by using a combined computational fluid dynamics and fluid structure interaction approach eliminating the need to obtain experimental data before undertaking simulations and improving modeling flexibility. To achieve this aim, the project focused on the most essential aspect of the problem, the pair of bileaflet valves. The computational domain considered for this study was a simple fluid cylinder containing the two valves in series. This simple model allowed for faster development of the modeling strategy compared to if the full device had been considered initially. The domain was simplified into a quarter model using symmetry planes to decrease the computational cost. The motion of the valves was as follows. The atrioventricular valve underwent a prescribed sinusoidal vertical translation, whilst the semilunar valve was stationary. However, each valve opened and closed due to the fluid forces acting on them. The boundary conditions represented the left side of the heart, where the inlet was a constant 15 millimeters of mercury pressure boundary, and the outlet was represented using a two element Windkessel model operating around 90 millimeters of mercury. This lumped parameter model approximated the resistance and compliance of the downstream vas vasculature and returned a variation in the pressure depending on the flow rate through the outlet. Overset meshing was used to incorporate the valve leaflets into the fluid cylinder. This facilitated the dynamic motion required for the valves and allowed for a consistent and refined mesh on the surface of the leaflets. Separate fluid mesh zones were generated for the background fluid cylinder and for the valve fluid region, as well as a collar mesh zone that aimed to improve near wall modeling. These mesh zones were combined and the unified mesh could be solved. The domain was meshed with a mix of polyhedral and hexahedral elements with inflation layers used on the wall surfaces to capture the boundary layer. ANSYS Fluent was used to solve the Navier-Stokes equations for a Newtonian approximation of blood using the coupled flow solver. A fully implicit strong coupling solution algorithm was employed during instantaneous valve opening and closing to maximize the computational accuracy at this time whilst a weak coupling algorithm was employed for all other cycle stages to maximize the computational efficiency during that time. Similarly, a variable time stepping scheme based on the valve angular velocity was used to also balance computational accuracy and time. So 
Here are some of the results from this model at a stroke rate of 100 beats per minute and a stroke length of 25 millimeters. The model was run for four cycles for a total time of 2.4 seconds. What can be seen here is that fluid is pushed through the domain when the atrioventricular valve moves downwards, shown as positive flow rate on the graph, uh, and that opened the semilunar valve. As the atrioventricular valve moves back upwards, fluid is drawn back through the domain, which closes the semilunar valve, and that's shown as negative flow rate on the graph. And once the semilunar valve is closed, the atrioventricular valve opens before closing again as it moves back down and the cycle restarts. The amount of backflow required to close the semilunar valve appears as large in comparison to the forward flow. However, this was due to the low overall flow rates associated with this simplified model. Regarding the pressures within the model, the space between the two valves uh, was approximated as the ventricle and the ventricular pressure was measured throughout the simulation time. The Winkettle model caused a peak systolic pressure of 110 millimeters of mercury as the atrioventricular valve moved downwards. Once the semilunar valve closed and the atrioventricular valve opened, the ventricular pressure dropped down to pressure seen in the atria, equal to the inlet pressure boundary of 15 millimeters of mercury. So to conclude, we have successfully developed a modeling strategy that returns flow-driven motion of the bileaflet mechanical heart valves found in the real heart total artificial heart. This modeling strategy has eliminated the need for experimental analysis to be undertaken before the full device CFD simulations can take place, and thus improving the flexibility of the overall modeling workflow. Uh, the modeling strategy is also very robust and efficient thanks to the overset meshing capabilities, the blend of a weak and strong coupling algorithm, and also the variable time stepping scheme that was employed. The further work that we have outlined is primarily to evaluate the suitability of the model for further analysis and how adaptable and robust, robust, robust the modeling strategy is. These key areas of focus are cavitation, and blood damage analysis, as well as a parametric investigation of the stroke parameters, which includes the stroke length, stroke rate, and systole diastole ratio. Finally, the modeling strategy will be implemented into the full real heart CFD model, uh, and the subsequent investigations will uh, follow on from there. Thank you very much for listening.